The video we are about to show you here is graphic and it may be disturbing. Uh, take a look if you want to at video released yesterday, reportedly taken during combat operations in Iraq. Uh, it was reportedly taken from a U.S. attack helicopter. Uh, you're clear. All right, firing. Line here, with the state line out. Let me know when you have it. Watch you. Light them all up. Two zero two traffic, two sixties. Come on, fire. Hey, Roger. Keep shoot. Keep shoot. That is just a small portion of a 38-minute video posted online by whistleblowing website WikiLeaks.org. WikiLeaks says it received the classified video and supporting documents from anonymous military sources. The video appears, as you saw, to depict a U.S. military attack helicopter shooting at what the pilots appear to believe are armed insurgents on the streets of Baghdad. After gunning down eight people, the helicopter then shoots at people who emerge from a van to help the people who were wounded in the earlier shooting barrage. But according to the context provided by WikiLeaks, two of the victims were not only not armed insurgents, they were actually journalists for Reuters News Service. The military response to this has been not to deny the authenticity of the video, but to defend the choices made by its troops in this war zone. Here's what the military said after an internal investigation into this incident in 2007. They said that the attack weapons team positively identified the threat, established hostile intent, conducted a collateral damage assessment, and received clearance to fire. And they also say that after only extensive review of the helicopter gun cam video, did they realize that two of the individuals killed may have been reported. Reporters. Nearly three years later, the WikiLeaks video surfaced on the same day that the New York Times published another heart in your throat description of an attack that killed civilians in a war zone. This time in Afghanistan, it was this February, a couple of months ago, during a nighttime raid. Special forces looking for Taliban insurgents fired on two armed men who emerged from their home to investigate. They also shot and killed three women who were standing near one of the men. An investigation by Afghan authorities determined that not only did the U.S. forces kill innocent people in that incident, but they also tried to cover up the deaths, one man claiming that U.S. troops dug bullets out of the women's bodies. Pentagon officials have admitted that the civilians were killed inadvertently, but as to the specific allegation of a cover-up, they have denied attempting to retrieve any bullets from the bodies. Now, the U.S. military has opened another investigation into that Afghanistan incident to try, presumably, to reconcile the widely different stories that are being told about what happened there. What's important about both of these incidents in Iraq and Afghanistan is not just accountability for the individuals involved, necessary, moral, legal, and appropriate as that may be. What's also important is what these incidents mean for Americans, for all of us, and for our national security policy as we contemplate the beginning of year eight in Iraq and the middle of year nine in Afghanistan. What the American government is counting on to win these ongoing wars, the way out we have chosen is counterinsurgency. That's the approach spearheaded by General David Petraeus since 2007 and his protege and successor, General Stanley McChrystal, in Afghanistan since 2008. And what that strategy depends on for success is a lack of civilian casualties. The point of counterinsurgency is, like the old saw says, to win the hearts and minds of the people, to shore up legitimate authority of the local government and then get the population to side with the government, to side with authorities instead of siding with the insurgency. That's why the exposure of these incidents is important. And critically, the response from the military is important. All eyes on the Pentagon here for their response.